I started watching wrestling in September 1998, and of the over 130 wrestlers I've seen as Intercontinental Champion since then, only four of them have had reigns of over 200 days. Shinsuke Nakamura had a 201-day reign. Randy Orton had a 210-day reign. Cody Rhodes had a 236-day reign. And Shelton Benjamin had a 244-day reign. None of them came close to Gunther's record-breaking 470-day reign and counting. Here are the 10 wrestlers who could end Gunther's historic run as Intercontinental Champion, starting with... Number 10, AJ Styles. Stand by, Styles! Make no mistake, AJ Styles should always be competing for the world title of whichever show he finds himself on. That said, the phenomenal one has needed a big moment to remind everyone why we used to beg the wrestling gods for him to show up on WWE TV. The match itself would be insane and likely would have a badass feud to go with it. They should almost just do this as a mini feud like Chad Gable had with Gunther just so we could see the match. What is he doing? I'll tell you what he's doing. Oh, my oh. God. Number nine, Big E. Are we going to see him? Out with an injury since early 2022, Big E could and hopefully will return in the next few months. With WrestleMania as an option as the ideal place for Gunther to do the honors, that could give Big E the extra time he needs to heal up and prepare. Can you imagine the reaction if Gunther was doing the typical no one can beat me, no one is left heel promo, only for Big E's earth-shattering voice to blare over the speakers? We miss you, Big E, and this would be an excellent return to form. You chase, look out! With a spear, driving Reigns to the floor. Number eight, Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker has been killing it in NXT, and he's long been due for a main roster run. When he comes up, it's important that he be taken seriously right from the get-go, and what better way to set him up for success than having him defeat Gunther for the IC strap? Breaker has main event talent written all over him, and they could easily insert him into a feud with any big name after a win like this. Number seven, Cody Rhodes. Oh my goodness! A power! Got it! It seemed like Cody was destined to win a world title in WWE when he won the 2023 Royal Rumble. As of now, he still feels like a big star, but he needs a substantial win in order to maintain his main event status. As he's never won a world title before, it's a slippery slope to lower yourself to permanent intercontinental title level, something Chris Jericho experienced after his first world title run in 2001 and 2002. However, because of the magnitude that would come with defeating the longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time, it may be an option for WWE to consider. Number six, Dominic Mysterio. What the hell? I know, how annoying would that be? But that may be exactly why WWE does it. They know they have something with Dominic, and giving him trophies adds to the annoying character he brilliantly portrays. Imagine having to listen to a Dominic Mysterio promo where he brags about ending the longest reigning IC title reign of all time. Also, a heel versus heel Judgment Day versus Imperium feud would be lots of fun. It's a long shot, but they may just do it. Number five, Jay Uso. And I'm out too. Oh my God! Now that Jay Uso is fully on his own and making his way as a singles competitor, he needs something that will keep his momentum going. Even if he weren't to win, a feud with Gunther and the rest of Imperium would be familiar territory for Jay. He's used to fighting a big faction, and he's used to being outnumbered. With the help of some other up-and-coming babyfaces, he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Imperium and be the one who leads the charge by dethroning Gunther. A decent IC title run for Jay would help him transition for a world title run, fully embracing the main event Jay character. Number four, Logan Paul. Oh, it's just, oh my goodness! Oh! 
I know, even more annoying than Dominic Mysterio winning. But Logan Paul can't just have big matches and big moments. He needs to win something substantial. As IC champ, he could bring the belt everywhere that he goes, promoting WWE on various podcasts and other ventures by nature of being a current champion for the brand. The match itself would be awesome, and Logan could do most of his heel work recorded from wherever he is. As long as he shows up for some amazing title defenses at the premium live events, this wouldn't be such a bad title run, right? Number three, Montez Ford. Anytime Montez Ford is given an opportunity to shine, he knocks it out of the park. We really saw his potential at the 2023 Elimination Chamber, where he was the highlight and really stood out as the most athletic and charismatic competitor in the match. Even though he's just formed a solid team with partner Angelo Dawkins and Bobby Lashley, the time will always be right to pull the trigger on Ford's singles push. Plus, Lashley's group versus Imperium would be an awesome feud in Trio's tag, but if we could somehow turn it into Montez Ford, versus Gunther for the Intercontinental title, we'd have some great TV to look forward to. Everything's bigger in Texas, all including the air! Number two, Randy Orton. Randy Orton has been gone from WWE with an extensive back injury for so long, it's hard to tell when we'll next see the legend killer turned legend. When he comes back, he'll need a monumental feud that will either be with an established main eventer or with an unstoppable, undefeated force with a title to steal. As Gunther cuts a promo in the ring, Randy could come from the crowd, hit an RKO out of nowhere, and make his return in the most impactful way possible. Randy doesn't need mid-card titles, but similar to his US title run in 20 18, he could elevate the title and keep the momentum going for the next champion. All right, explore uh -oh. now, hit this, oh my gosh. Number one, Solo Sikoa. Here's a very believable threat to any WWE champion who to date has yet to win a main roster title. Solo is believable and could easily fit himself into a world title feud. Like Gunther, Solo is an up and coming badass who feels like he's going to eventually be part of the main event scene for years to come. But he needs his first major win, and there are few wins in WWE right now, save from defeating his tribal chief Roman Reigns, that would have the impact of taking the Intercontinental title from Gunther. And now a Yuranagi by Solo Clamps. That concludes our list of bonus Brock Lesnar. And there comes Cody, but just oh god. This one is very unlikely to happen, but I wanted to include it anyway. If Gunther was in the ring cutting a promo about how no one could beat him, and then Brock Lesnar came out, I think we'd all lose our collective minds. This has been a match and feud that fans have been clamoring for, especially after their brief interaction in the 2023 Royal Rumble. The thing is, if there was ever someone that doesn't need a mid-card title, it's Brock Lesnar. Hell, they didn't even bother having him win it off Rob Van Dam in 2002. Instead, shooting him straight to the undisputed title. But a Brock win would give us fans the Gunther match, have Gunther lose to a very credible competitor and keep his momentum going, as well as giving us an intriguing storyline with an aging Brock defending the IC title. Imagine if they could convince him, or pay him, to show up on Raw every week and squash would-be challengers for the title. I think that would be a lot of fun. That concludes our list of 10 WWE wrestlers who could end Gunther's Intercontinental title reign. Who did we miss? Let us know in the comments below.